everyone. Today I decided to do something a little different because I was scrolling through my Instagram feed and I realized that my most liked photo on Instagram was taken on a pinhole camera. Now, that's a little surprising to me because I do shoot with a lot of professional cameras, but at the same time, I'm not all that surprised because there's just such a beautiful allure to pinhole photography that I think people are really getting attracted to. Now, I do work for Dora Goodman cameras, and this photo was taken using their Scura 6.6 pinhole camera uh, that I used while writing an article for the blog. If you're interested in reading that article, head on over to doragoodman.com, look for the blog section, and find the post titled 5 Tips and Tricks on Creating Magic Using a Pinhole Camera. But don't worry, I'll also leave the link down in the description below. So first off, I am by no means an expert in pinhole photography. I consider myself very much a beginner. But seeing as that photo and the accompanying article had generated so much interest, I thought it would be a lot of fun to bring to you the five tips that I've picked up while learning how to shoot on a pinhole camera. So without further ado, let's get right into it with tip number one. One of the best features of a pinhole camera is that the tiny aperture gives an almost infinite depth of field, meaning that you can get in really close and your subject will be in focus. So take advantage of this and fill your frame. Many seasoned pinhole photographers believe that the ground is the camera's natural place. Leaving the tripod at home will not only lighten your load, but also allow you to see things in a way you normally wouldn't. Place the camera in your garden, on a driveway, or even on a floor in your house to gain a new perspective. When you're new to pinhole photography, it can seem like you have a lot going on all at once, and it's easy to feel overwhelmed. Choosing low ISO films can help you maintain your composure, and it's a great way to take advantage of long exposure times to capture movement in the world around you. You can make rushing water look so smooth, tame crazy winds, or make traffic appear peaceful and almost ghost-like. Experiment and have fun with it. Just as sailors use anchors to secure their boats in choppy waters and passing storms, photographers also benefit from this example to calm down a chaotic scene by locating stationary subjects. This technique is often used by landscape photographers and, when done well, is very effective in anchoring the viewer's eye within your frame rather than drifting aimlessly from edge to edge. My favorite characteristic of pinhole photography is that naturally dreamy and ethereal quality it has, perfect for letting you alter the ordinary. So I say embrace this and get weird with it. You can use fun films like Lomochrome Purple to completely change the colors in a given scene. Dive into cross-processing or souping your film to get unexpected effects and don't ignore the possibilities of shooting expired film. So there you have it, my five tips on getting started in pinhole photography. And again, if you're interested in reading the article where I go more in depth on each tip, as well as on the camera itself, and some apps that I use to help me deal with reciprocity failure, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And also, if you happen to have any tips of your own, I highly encourage you to share those in the comments below, because I am definitely very interested in learning as much as I can about pinhole photography. And I think a lot of other people would be interested to read about it as well, because maybe they're a little scared to get started just like I was. So I really hope you enjoy this video. I can't wait to get back out there with this camera and I'll see you next time. <laughs>